It's race day for the Spanish Grand Prix at the Circuit de Catalunya, and here at GP Fans, we are across all the action, of course, with our live blog on gpfans.com and updates as well on Twitter and Instagram at GP Fans Global. Sam Hall is out there trackside for us, and we will have all the latest and breaking news in the aftermath as well. But let's dive into the news this morning before all of the action this Sunday. Christian Horner has revealed the reason for Max Verstappen's loss of power that prevented the Dutch driver from firing back against Charles Leclerc's incredible qualifying lap in Spain on Saturday. The Ferrari driver had suffered a spin on his first run in Q3, but bounced back to go a quarter of a second faster than his Red Bull rival on his final run. Verstappen on his final charge, however, complained of a lack of power, but his team principal has clarified that it wasn't a power unit problem that hindered the reigning champion. It wasn't power in the end, it was a DRS that didn't open. I'm fortunate not to have had the right to reply, but I don't think we had enough to beat that lap of Charles, although we could have been closer than the time suggests. Sergio Perez, who finished qualifying in fifth on the grid, had his struggles on Saturday as well, but the Mexican driver blamed missing FP1 on Friday when Yuri Vips took control of his RB18 as the reason for his flat Saturday. It was very costly on our side to miss FP1 because the way the tyres have been behaving this weekend Basically, it is a single lap and it has been really hard to catch up, explained Perez. I wasn't entirely comfortable with the car, with the tyres. The car was too much on the edge and it just didn't come. But I'm still optimistic for tomorrow. And finally, Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has fired a warning for Red Bull and Ferrari ahead of the race today. With the Austrian believing the team have a race car over a qualifying car. The Silver Arrows have used upgrades this weekend to make steps forward in terms of performance and George Russell was able to have his best qualifying session of the season, finishing on the second row of the grid. The team principal, however, believes that the biggest gains will be seen on a Sunday rather than a Saturday this weekend. My belief is we have a race car more than a qualifying car, said Wolf, but we are going to see tomorrow how it went for the other ones, Red Bull and Ferrari. Red Bull, they always have the tendency of being very strong in the race, Less so the Ferraris. Obviously, that is all glass ball reading. Welcome back to GP fans as once more we have reporters at the circuits throughout the 2022 season. Now, normally it's been Parks Ferme. I think we need to go with, though, considering the heat in Spain this weekend, Sam Hall sizzling at the circuit is what this segment has to be named. Sam Hall joining me, of course, the boots on the ground this weekend at the Circuit of Catalonia. How are you doing, my friend? It's been a, uh, well, tumultuous couple of days, shall we say, in Spain this week. Yeah, it's uh, it's been scorchio, to use a, uh, a certain <laughs> phrase. Um, no, it, it's, uh, there's been the con controversy that we've been lacking this season. It's finally here. Aston Martin has come with massive upgrades that resemble, well, this. It's a green Red Bull, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Aston Martin say no, it's our own car. It's it's nothing. It's nothing like that. Well, we we can't stop any personnel have moved. Dan Fellows has moved from Red Bull to Aston Martin. That happened across last year. Move finally came through in April, um, but. They say we can't control what he takes in his head, but we don't know if there's been a data breach somewhere from someone with the other members of personnel that moved as well. It's getting spicy and we love it. I mean, it's it's only really a problem for Red Bull if Aston Martin start competing with them. And what we saw today in qualifying is that you can replicate the design, but you can't replicate the power because Aston Martin struggled throughout qualifying today both cars out of course in q1 of the uh, three segments of qualifying session today is this a bit of a comeuppance do you feel around the paddock that a lot of people think this is kind of what we wanted to see for aston martin after this i think behind closed doors there might be a couple of people with those sorts of thoughts but i think for the majority it's sort of they'll say they'll do what they have to do they'll talk about it but because we ask about it. At the end of the day, if we ask about it, they talk about it. If they don't want to talk about it, then they're not, they're not just going to randomly turn up to people and say, oh, what about this? Mm. Um, but because Red Bull also said they didn't want to, it wasn't necessarily their aim to take it into the public domain. It was, they were asked about it. So that's how it came into public. Um, but yeah, Lance, as you were saying, Lance Stroll, after he qualified in 18th, He's speaking to him in the media pen afterwards. 
he looked at the times when he was asked, well, you've just copied them. And he went, well, look at the time difference. With <laughs> they're three seconds, they're two, three seconds quicker than us. They're, this is this isn't the same car. Um, but yeah, but behind closed doors, maybe a couple of people sort of not not cheering, but maybe sort of having a sly wink or a grin or something like that. But um, I don't think you'll see people partying over it or something <laughs> like that. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you enjoy your can of green Red Bull. And we'll talk about what else went down in qualifying today as well, because there was tension in the air when Charles Leclerc goes through his spin on the first runs of Q3. And considering that Max Verstappen had topped the timing charts in Q1 and Q2 today after Leclerc and Ferrari have been dominant through the practice sessions this weekend, <laughs> Everyone was thinking that Red Bull had done what they do, saving the best to when it matters. And then, my goodness, the Monegasque driver pulls one out of the bag. I mean, on the GP Fans Live blog, it was called an absolutely unreal lap from Charles Leclerc today. What was the reaction around the media centre, around the circuit, and, of course, from the drivers as well after that? It, it was big. The, the reaction in the, in the media pen afterwards, sort of when that lap came in and you saw the time difference over a quarter of a second quicker than Max. I mean, you just don't do that. Not because it's Max. I mean, it's obviously a very, very good driver. But I mean, against anyone, you, do, you don't... If you've been competing with one driver and it's a tenth here or a tenth there, you're not suddenly a quarter of a second quicker than them. It is a big weekend for Ferrari, having said that, because Red Bull have been bringing upgrades all season long. Ferrari haven't. And this weekend, they've launched their big upgrade package, their first upgrade package of the year. So Ferrari needed a result here. If Max, still, if Max got on pole, that would have led to some heads being scratched because there's a wide belief and a wide feeling that Red Bull still has the better race pace. And that was shown in practice as well. Um, after qualifying, it was highlighted further because George Russell qualifying fourth for Mercedes. Spate will come on to them in a minute. Um, George said that he thinks Ferrari, they have a really good shot at getting Ferrari or they're in with a shot of battling Ferrari, but Max is too quick. So that kind of tells you what to expect tomorrow. If Max gets away from the line, early, well, Max could run away with this, but... And, and genuinely, anything could happen, especially with the tyres being what they are this weekend. Well, we'll talk about the tyres. Let's also talk about Red Bull's reliability problems, because Max could run away with it until perhaps his power unit has struggles like it did at the end of qualifying today, going down to that first corner. Let's talk a little bit about what happened and why Max Verstappen wasn't able to retaliate that incredible lap from Charles Leclerc in his second run. Yeah, it's, a, it's a recurring theme, this, for Red Bull across the season, isn't it? Um, one minute they're flying and on top of the world, and the next minute it's um, not doom and gloom, but it, it's a world of pain almost. Um, we've seen Max, the only races he hasn't won this year are when he's not finished. So um, he, I think Max is still the driver to beat, personally. Um, Ian and you and on the Stuart Room podcast may completely disagree with me. On that. I'll get in there. Um, reliability, as they claim they have done, they will be a challenge to beat. And yeah, it's it's between Leclerc and Verstappen for me tomorrow. But Carlos signs home race, potential first win. Everyone's got that bit of romance, sort of, and everyone loves that bit of romance. Um, who wouldn't want to see it? Everybody would love to see Carlos Sainz doing well, of course, at his home Grand Prix. The other Spaniard, Fernando Alonso, was one of those out in Q1 today, which is frustrating for Alonso. There was a lot of discussion about him, of course, going into this weekend as well. But let's talk about Mercedes. You touched on them earlier. George Russell with one of his best ever qualifying positions and his best ever qualifying for Mercedes as a driver this season, up into fourth from the grid tomorrow. Out qualifying Lewis Hamilton once more, outperforming Lewis Hamilton once more. Mercedes think though that they've got something right now at this point in the season, and they've taken a step forward after so many struggles. Do you feel? Yeah, um, it certainly seems that way. Especially if you watch Q2 when Mercedes were absolutely dominating that. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there was a general feeling at that point that, oh, hang on, what have Mercedes got? Have they suddenly done what they've been doing for the last few years and sort of? 
held back in the early stage of the weekend and then suddenly delivered when it was needed. Um, still, it seems ridiculous that fourth is the best place for George on the grid this year. Um, it just seems ridiculous to say that about a Mercedes driver, but it is. And um, he, he's, he's described it as a good baseline, the new car um, or the updated car. It's a good baseline to build on. It seems as though they're able to run it lower. To do that, they've had and solve the porpoising. They've had to lose a decent chunk of downforce that they're now going to try and grab back. But from this starting point that they've got now, it's not a B spec car like pretty much Aston Martin's is. But from this baseline, they have something to build from, and they could do something here. Be interesting to see. Imagine if they had, I don't know, the designers at Aston Martin or Red Bull, whichever way you want to call it this weekend with everything else they're packing <laughs> under the hood. What do you see in terms of tomorrow's race then? The second in Catalonia doesn't necessarily provide the greatest races as myself and Ian touched on earlier in the week. But with all of these permutations, with all the elements of the unknown as well, with all the upgrades that are coming, we've got two horses in the top 10 on the grid this year. I mean, there's an element of surprise, surely, that could come tomorrow. There is an element of surprise that could happen, but I, I'm not going to call in my prediction from last year of Haas getting a podium this year. I'm not going to call that's going to happen this weekend because, let's face it, the circuit, the Barcelona Catalonia, is not the best for overtaking, as you say. But no one likes these tyres this weekend. They fall apart so quickly. The heat today, it was th over 34 degrees air temperature, 47 degrees track temperature at the start of qualifying, and it only went up. Um, the tyres can't cope with it. The tyres don't like it. They fall apart after one lap. The softs, uh, the mediums aren't too much better, and no one ever really likes to run the hard. So all the drivers seem to think that we're going to get a mix of two and possibly even three stops tomorrow. So that always... The strategic mix always encourages something weird to happen. And obviously, we've seen Lewis Hamilton get caught out by safety cars in a number of races this year. And it, 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 safety cars could come into play again here, even at a track with the widest gravel traps imaginable to man. <laughs> There's plenty in store tomorrow. Uh, GPFans.com to follow all of the action throughout the race, of course, on Sunday. And GPFans Global as well on Twitter and Instagram. Sam will be providing us with plenty of updates, of course, from the circuit as he is, as I say, sizzling in the sun in Spain tomorrow trackside. Sam, thanks so much for joining us, mate. Thanks for taking some time out this evening and uh, enjoy the race on Sunday.